Good evening and a happy Sabbath. For our first song, we'll sing Do Lord.
next song we'll sing I've Got Joy. Sabbath to all the church members. I hope you all are safe and keeping the Lord close to your heart. This evening I'll be reading to you Psalms chapter 100 verses 4 to 5. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praises. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. With these verses in mind, I would like to welcome all of you for the Save Our Service and I hope you all be blessed with the program planned for you. For our opening song, we'll sing Lord, I lift your name on high. for prayer. Our most loving and living Heavenly Father, thank you for this time, O oh Lord. Thank you for this Sabbath hour, O oh Father. Thank you for bringing us all together, no matter where we are, 
Thank you for the technology that we could worship you. Even though we can't gather together in your house of worship, O oh Lord. Thank you for everything that you are doing in our life, O oh Father. Thank you for providing us food, clothing and shelter, O oh Father. Lord, there are many of them who don't have these, O oh Father. Please provide them with the basic necessary needs, O oh Father. Lord, as COVID-19 has spread over the globe, Lord, people are facing a lot of problems, O oh Father. Lord, people are dying, people are suffering, O oh Father. Lord, we know that this is the end time, O oh Father. Lord, please touch the ones who are sick, O oh Father. And especially be with the all the doctors, the nurses, and everybody who treat the patient who are suffering with coronavirus, O oh Father. Bless them, touch them. Be with their family members as they support them, O oh Father. Lord, we submit and surrender ourselves into your hands in this end time, O oh Father. Please be with us. Help us that we might always be close to you, O oh Father. Thank you for everything, O oh Father. Lord, be with the program that is prepared, O oh Father. May people be blessed with this program. Thank you for hearing our prayers. All glory and honor be unto your name. For I ask these few blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Sweetie, it's a very funny joke. No, yeah, you need to get a real joke, Prafula. You're not understanding. I guess it's a knock knock joke. It's a, it's very hey guys. <gasps> Jesus! Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. What are you guys doing? I'm Jesus. Lord, we take up our cross every day for you. Oh, thank you. But you know what? Cross is just the beginning, not where it ends. Now at the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, it's all about you, okay. Jesus. Hey, you know what, guys? Just be real. You are the air I breathe. You are the air I breathe. Okay, Prafula, it's wonderful to hear you worship me. Yes, Jesus. Praise but, you, Jesus. Praise you, God. But you know what? Sometimes it seems like you put on a show. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me for being so fake. Okay, forgive hey, I for forgive you. I forgive you, Prafula. I forgive thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for forgiving me. Your grace uh, is amazing. amazing. What are you guys doing? Okay, here. Just say something. Praise Hallelujah. Okay, not not like that. Be just say something real. Okay, well you know what? Why don't you tell us a joke? Joke for Jesus? Uh, thou art holy, Jesus. That's not a joke. I'm not worthy, Jesus. Okay, I'm hey, not I worthy. didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. What are you guys doing? But Jesus, we live for you every day, just like we always do. I don't want you to live for me. I want you to live in me. When you live in me, that's when you will know who you are. I don't want something that is superficial. We have to share a relationship that is deeper. And when we have a bond that is deeper, that's when you will know who you ought to be.
Good evening to everyone here. I hope you're all safe and doing well. My name is Jero. I'm a third year theology student and during my classes, I was taught that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12, we can see that the Holy Spirit was given to us so that we may understand what God has freely given us. In other words, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. So in order to understand what the Spirit inspired the Bible writers to note down, we must invite the Holy Spirit to abide in us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you this evening, thanking you so much for giving us the opportunity to be able to study the Bible. We pray that you will be with me as I speak. I pray that you will help me to convey the words correctly. I pray that you will be with the message that you have given us and that you will help us to understand uh, by imparting your Holy Spirit to be with us. We pray that you will guide us through this sermon and that we will be able to apply this in our lives. Thank you so much once again for all of this. In Jesus' name, Amen. Counterfeits Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines it as made in imitation of something else with intent to deceive. I'm sure we've all seen and had a laugh at several blatant ripoffs similar to but not limited to. Well, the International Anti-Counterfeiting Coalition says such fake goods account for up to 7% of global trade. Counterfeits are products that are made to replicate or look like they are something valuable but in reality, they are not. And this doesn't happen to just production and manufacturing. We see fake things everywhere, from fake money to fake identity or licenses to fake news on social media. Just about anything and everything can be faked. They've even popularized a saying that goes, fake it till you make it. Coming to more prevalent issues, we see the rise in fake messages making rounds on WhatsApp and Facebook claiming that drinking potent alcoholic drinks or exposure to cold weather can kill the coronavirus. Or on the other hand, that those in warm climates or countries where summer is on its way do not need to worry too much. Mr. Berger, who is the Director for Policies and Strategies regarding Communication and Information at UNESCO, says, Sadly, some have capitalized on the pandemic to spread fake information for the purposes of advancing their own agendas. The motives for spreading disinformation are many and include political aims, self-promotion and attracting attention as part of a business model. After the coronavirus pandemic struck, many began to say that the end of the world was near. We've heard several sermons on the various end-time events quoting Matthew chapter 24, verse 6 to 8, and from Daniel and from Revelation. But I want to draw attention to another sign that is just as important. We can see that Matthew records the words of Jesus in chapter 24, verse 5, where Jesus is quoted as saying, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And later on in verse 24, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. And I should think, come on, who would pretend to be Jesus, right? Until I learned about people such as Alan John Miller, A.J. Miller and his wife Mary Luck from Australia claimed to be Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene. I also came across Sergei Torop, a traffic policeman from Russia, who called himself Visarian and proclaimed that he was a messiah. Some of you may have even heard of David Koresh, who was a former Seventh-day Adventist, who joined and later led the group known as Branch Davidians. Allegedly, he had 15 wives and 24 children and was promiscuous with everyone, who, who, all the females inside his compound, which he called Mount Carmel. Later, he died in a fire that broke out after a gunfight with the police, who came to investigate on the alleged stashing of weapons. We also have heard of Jesus Miranda, who claimed to be both Jesus and the Antichrist in one person. All in all, we seem to have no shortage of people claiming to be either Jesus or a prophet sent by Jesus. So, how do we know if they really are who they claim to be? How do we know if what they teach is really sent by God? And in an age where counterfeits are everywhere, it becomes increasingly crucial to have the ability to identify the real, original, credible and authentic from that which is artificial. How do we know? After all, there are hundreds of artificial things of only one real thing. 
I took note of how banks identify fake money. One of the ways that they identify fake money is that they train the bank tellers to thoroughly handle and get a feel for real money. And when a fake note lands in their hands, they can tell just by feeling it. In other words, to know what is fake, one must know what is the original. We must study what God has given us already, his written word. The Bible tells us all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof and for correction and for instruction in righteousness. Why is it important to know about false and true prophets? Well, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 12 verse 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The remnant are the end time people who keep both the entirety of the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. What is the testimony of Jesus? The testimony of Jesus as explained in Revelation 19.10 is a spirit of prophecy. And the spirit of prophecy is essential in the end times to prepare a people to meet the soon coming Messiah. Identifying the right prophet will help us in identifying the right message which will be crucial in the end time. The Bible will help us to discern what is right from that which is wrong. The scriptures give us four primary tests. The first one being that the prophet should be tested to see if their predictions come true. Jeremiah 28 verse 9 tells us, The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. We can also see in Deuteronomy 18 verse 21 and 22. Where the Bible says, When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is a thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. When a prophet makes a prediction and it does not come true, you can know that he isn't a true prophet. Our society today is filling up ever so slightly with a lot of predictions. We see daily horoscopes are common now. Astrology is creeping up even to social media and news. But we need to ask ourselves, are these biblically accepted and do they come true? Well, what if it does come true? What if what they say will happen actually happens? Does that certify them to be as a true prophet from God? No. If the prediction does come true, that isn't proof in itself of divine origin. Rather, we must move on to the second test, which is, does the prophet's message align or agree with the Bible? We can read from Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 to 3, but I want to highlight verse 2 where it says, If the sign or wonder spoken of takes place, and the prophet says, Let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them, you must not listen to the words of the prophet or dreamer. And not just partly or majority of the message should align, rather all of the teachings should be in accordance with scripture. Isaiah 8.20 also tells us, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to his word, it is because there is no light in them. If their messages are in the slightest bit different from what the word of God teaches us, then it means that they are not in harmony with the word of God. And, as, and the scriptures as higher authority should take priority. We should take example from the people of Berea who turned to the scriptures to see whether or not what Paul the Apostle said was in accordance with the scriptures before accepting him and his message. The third test is, is the modern day prophet Christ-centered? The Bible tells us in 1 John 4 verse 1 to 3, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how we can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Many preachers and teachers these days claim to be of higher authority. They even perform miracles. But they do not accept Christ as the incarnate Savior. They also want all the attention on them, not on Christ. And when a person seeks to exalt self over Christ, then you can know for sure that he or she is not from God. The fourth test comes directly from the words of, Christ, of Jesus Christ 
in Matthew 7 verse 15 to 20. But I want to take your attention to verse 17 to 20 where it says, Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruits, you shall recognize them. In other words, the fourth test is, we need to observe what fruit the prophet bears. How is their lifestyle? Are they Christ-like? Or do they live a life of luxury and indulgence and pleasures of the world? Do they show the fruits of the Spirit in their everyday life? Or are they busy buying expensive sports cars and mansions and jewelry? Looking back at David Koresh who indulged in violence, adultery and was self-centered, we are able to apply these tests and see for ourselves that he could not have been a prophet as he claimed to be. It did not add up. And of course, it takes time. It may even take months or years to get to know enough about a person in order to tell whether or not they bear good fruits genuinely. But that wait will be worth it in comparison to the eternal life that would otherwise be at risk. Who then can we identify as God's messengers in the end time? Who is it that like John the Baptist is sent to help us prepare to meet Jesus? This is where we turn our attention to one of the founders of our Seventh-day Adventist Church. We believe that Mrs. White was gifted with the spirit of prophecy. God is still speaking to us and guiding us through her writing from decades ago. He tells us what we can do in order to prepare ourselves. He wants us to be saved. We have been warned by the God who knows all things. He warns us that before His coming, there will be a great deception, so great that if possible to deceive the very elect. All this talk of coronavirus, forest fires, and earthquakes, and tsunamis, famines, and other pestilences may at times seem overwhelming. And I'm not saying that there won't be trouble. The Bible tells us that all these must come to pass. God did not create a world and abandon us. God did not leave the world to come to an apocalypse. He cares about our planet. He cares about what is happening here. And He cares. That's why He sent us His prophets to tell us that He cares. The prophecies and predictions and all the talk of last day events should not frighten us or cause us to panic. The vast number of miracle workers and teachers and prophets should not confuse us. Let us prepare ourselves to face what we have already been warned about. We already see many kinds of preachers, many claiming to be prophets and many performing miracles too. And though they all do this in Jesus' name, not all of them are working on Jesus' side. We are warned about a great deception. Let us watch and be ready. Let us study the Bible for ourselves, comparing scripture to see if what the preachers are saying are in accordance to the Bible. Let us study the writings of Mrs. White and see for ourselves if she was indeed a true prophet. And if you are satisfied that her messages are from God, then it would be good to study her writings in preparation for the end time as well. And we are told that in the last days, there will be many more people showing up claiming to be prophets. We are called to study the scriptures to see if what they say is correct. Be it prophets or teachers or even pastors, they should all be put to the test of the scriptures. Because while there will be many false teachers, God will indeed send us his messengers as well. We just need to be able to identify them first. Before first aid became common knowledge, a woman in Maine, USA fell down the stairs and had a large wound on her scalp. When she couldn't stop the bleeding, she turned to her neighbors for advice. One neighbor said, I always use flour, and poured a large cup of white flour onto the patient's head. Soon the flour was a sticky red mess, but the bleeding continued. Another person suggested using syrup and poured a large jar of sticky syrup on her head, but the bleeding did not stop. Another farmer said, I have an idea, and he, and he went to the fireplace. He scooped up a shovel full of hot ashes and placed it on the woman's head. But the pain was so great that the woman nearly passed, o passed out. Finally, they decided it would be better to call the hospital. The hospital sent an ambulance with paramedics. And when they arrived, they found a mess of syrup, hair, flour, blood and ashes. It took them a long time to clean everything up. The moral that I intend to draw from this story is that we should not follow the teachings from messengers that we have not tested for authenticity with the Bible. We need to confirm what we are taught is from the right source in order to avoid being in trouble and in order to avoid getting into a sticky mess. How would we explain ourselves if we are deceived when we have already been warned about it? And finally, 
let us not be frightened but la- rather let us be encouraged that we worship a god who knows everything and that he cares about us these are only signs birth pains these calamities and deceptions are milestones that point to a greater event jesus is coming soon let us not be deceived we have a few announcements Tomorrow's Sabbath school program begins at 10 a.m. and the title is God Bless Our Mothers, which will be followed by the lesson study, which will be taken by Pastor Anthony Das. The speaker for the Divine Hour is Pastor Dan Smith. Who is he, you ask? Tune in and find out tomorrow. In closing, let's bow our heads in prayer. Almighty Father, Lord, we want to thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for being so gracious and keeping us safe during these troublesome times. Lord, I pray that you be with each one of us and thank you for giving us this blessing of being able to worship you through technology, Lord. We want to pray for your save for your hand upon us, Lord. Keep us safe throughout this coming week and help us to have a good Sabbath hour where we could worship you and draw closer to thee, Lord. We understand that your coming is soon. and i pray that you help us repent so that we may join with you in the clouds of heaven thank you for all your mercies i pray this in your mighty name amen